The McLaren Formula One team is literally falling apart. It's not looking great for them. For the second time in 12 months, the team appears to be heading into a new season on the back foot after three tough days in Bahrain. McLaren's 2023 Formula One car has been hampered by being too draggy, while the team have also faced continuous problems with the brakes in the MCL 60 something similar to what they had last year when the brakes were overheating. We've seen countless videos on social media of the brakes look like they are melting or we have them locking up. I think it's turn 10 in Bahrain, that sort of awkward long left-hander before the straight. And this has also severely restricted their running, so they haven't put enough laps in to actually gain the data they need. And that's not the kind of news you want to hear as a McLaren fan. But then it gets worse. According to Formula One presenter Will Buxton, Norris was visibly frustrated at the end of a torrid test. Will Buxton said that I actually saw him leave the garage and walk into the little driver's room on the side. And very unlike Lando, he sort of punched the flimsy makeshift wall as he walked through. But it was that little bit of frustration. You can tell it's not quite right. Speaking at McLaren's MCL 60 launch earlier this month, Norris, who signed a long-term deal with the team last year, until 2025, insisted that he had patience to wait for the British outfit to rebuild themselves into a championship winning Formula One team. But with McLaren facing a tough start to a year again, Norris's future has been brought back into the spotlight. Is he going to stay at McLaren? Should he pursue a move to Red Bull or Mercedes if Perez or Hamilton retire? And then there's also Oscar Piastri, who seems to have maybe made the biggest fumble in Formula One history. And then there's team principal, the new one, Andrea Stella. He admitted that the squad was not entirely happy with the launch specification version of his 2023 Challenger, and they had made a clear marker in reducing the expectations of the Papaya team. Launches are usually a pretty happy place, they're ready to show off their glossy new car. But instead, it was very downbeat. They said they had to keep things realistic and understand that they might not be where they want to be. The conclusion was that it was a deliberate attempt to make the bad news less of a shock when the track action got underway. But ever since Formula 1 testing got underway in Bahrain on Thursday, it's been clear why Stella commented in such a manner. Because the McLaren appeared to be out of sorts. Its, it's lap times have not been stellar. <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was an awful pun because it's called Andrea Stella, you know? <laughs> that was awful. Confirmation of the team situation came on Friday lunchtime, when CEO Zach Brown offered some more details in the regular lunchtime press conference. He explained that it was simply down to missing key development targets in the off-season. On Friday evening, Stella delivered some more of an insight on what exactly is going on, and what Brown meant by that they missed targets. He said that last year we had some clear objectives in the terms of development. It had to do with the aero efficiency. The problem with the draggy car, which is what McLaren have, is due to the slowness on the straight. It's so slow. You want a car to be slippery like the Williams last year. But the team had to make some compromises. In a bid to minimise the deficit down the straight, where a lot of time can bleed away, teams have had to reduce the wing angles to compensate. That means the car is running less downforce for the corners, which makes it harder for braking and makes them go slower through the turns. And this spiral of negativity that McLaren finds itself trapped in right now, but how has this happened? How has this team found itself going backwards? Well, apparently, according to reports, they had a spec car which they were going to use for this season, but then at the last minute decided to drastically change it. And turns out they're only going to get that spec car by Baku which is like four or five races away. So that's a long time and a lot of races that they could be losing points. Did McLaren peak in 2020 when they got third and now they're on a downwards trajectory and they might lose both their drivers? It's all falling apart.